I'm going to show you how to make this terrain that displays two different textures depending on how steep it is. It also blends between those two textures and a third depending on the height. This video will require you to already have a basic understanding of how shaders work. This is a terrain seen from a previous video. It lets you set different properties of the terrain and then regenerate the mesh. I've also imported three ugly textures. They're supposed to be grass, rock, and sand. I'll put a link to the starting project in the description below. Start by adding a shader material to the mesh. Do this using the material override under geometry or else the material will be reset every time you generate the terrain. In the shader, give it a type of spatial. Add a uniform sampler 2D for each texture, then drag each texture onto its respective slot in the shader params. Define a fragment function and add two VEC3s that will contain the albedo values for each texture. I'm multiplying the UV by 4 to make the textures appear smaller on the mesh. Since the Y value of the normal at each vertice on the mesh will be 1 if its face is totally flat and approach 0 as it gets steeper, we are going to use it to determine the weight in an interpolation between the grass and rock albedos. We are in the fragment function, so the normal will be in view space. To convert this to model space, put the normal variable in a VEC4, multiply that by the camera matrix, then get the Y value from the result. Or we can just declare a varying float and assign it the Y value of the normal variable in the vertex function. In GLSL, the interpolation function is called mix. Since every face of our mesh is angled, it is covered by a blend of both textures. These faces also don't have slopes much greater than 45 degrees, so the Y values are mostly in the upper end of the 0 to 1 range and the grass is much more predominant. Let's change this so anywhere on the mesh that is 45 degrees or steeper, which will be a Y value of 0 0.5 or less, will only show the rock texture. And anywhere close to being flat, let's say a Y value of 0 0.9 or greater, will only display grass. Create two uniform floats. One will be called min rock slope, the other max grass slope. Default them to 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 respectively. Also give both a hint range of 0 to 1. Use the max function to set the weight to the min rock slope if it has a value less than the min rock slope. Then use the min function to set the weight to the max grass slope if it has a value greater than the max grass slope. At this point the weight will range from 0 0.5 to 0 0.9. The weight will be set to 0.5 for any Y value less than 0.5 and set to 0.9 for any Y value greater than 0.9. Next, subtract the min rock slope from the weight. Now it will only range from 0 to 0.4. Lastly, we will divide the weight by the difference between our max grass slope and min rock slope. This will normalize it back to a range of 0 to 1. Now play around with these values in the editor. The lower the max grass slope, the more the terrain will be grass, and the higher the min rock slope, the more the terrain will be rock. This might seem counterintuitive, but remember, lower means steeper. One thing to note, make sure these values aren't equal or else the mesh will turn black. This is because it causes the shader to divide by zero when normalizing the range. Now let's blend the sand with the rock and grass based on height. This process will be almost identical. Start with two more uniform floats called min rock grass height and max sand height. Next, create a variant float called vertex y and assign it the y property of the vertex built-in variable in the vertex function then assign vertex y to a new weight value. Now we'll do the same calculations on this new weight with those two uniforms. Max function with the min rock grass height, min function with the max sand height, subtract the min rock grass height, and divide by the difference between those two heights. Afterwards, create a vec3 that will contain the blended rock grass albedo value, then create another vec3 at the top of the fragment function for the sand albedo, and interpolate between the rock grass and the sand using the new weight value. Now we've taken those three ugly textures and turned them into something that doesn't look half bad. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.